What about our day beds? Yeah, that's a good one. Bring it, Maria. Yes, a structured set of data held in a computer, especially one that is accessible in different ways. Okay, so this is, both of those are exactly what Excel is. Okay, when we get done with our Excel, our objectives, guys, are for students to be able to utilize and do calculations and formulas and functions in Excel. You'll also be able to apply filters, sort data as needed, alphabetical order type things. Okay, biggest number. All right, we'll be able to also utilize templates as a guide, so pretty and finished product, okay? That's what templates are, they make it pretty, all right? Utilize spreadsheets, compare and contrast data using charts and graphs. You'll be able to see when we do our college calls uh, in the next few days to see what colleges cost the most by easily just looking at our graphs, okay? You'll also be able to gain a deeper understanding of percentages and fractions looking at pie charts. You'll be also able to use charts and graphs to represent the data. All right, so we'll be printing those. Uh, you'll also print workbooks, worksheets to demonstrate the mastery. Okay, so we're going to dive right into Excel. Just what is Excel? So, what is Excel? If you're like most people at this stage, you probably thought Excel is a spreadsheet, which is, of course, correct but it's not terribly helpful. But if that's your answer, then I guess my next question would have to be, what is a spreadsheet? Now the answer to that is a little tricky, but that's really because we've been asking the wrong question all along. We should have been asking, what can Excel actually do for me? And the answer to that question would be that Excel is pretty good at doing three things. It's good at calculations. That's why people in jobs from finance to scientific research use it for anything from analysing a survey to compiling the results from a clinical trial. And no, you don't need to know anything about clinical trials or surveys for that matter to get plenty of benefits out of it. If you enter numbers into an Excel spreadsheet, you can ask Excel to perform all sorts of basic or more advanced calculations. Notice these numbers don't change. This example shows a spreadsheet being used to manage a very basic budget. Each time an entry is added to the budget, Excel performs a trick called recalculation. This just means it checks to see if the new entry has an effect on any of the existing calculations. If it does, Excel recalculates the answer. Adding a value of 42.65 for Allison under the heading mailing means the total spend for mailing has increased to 14610, taking away the budget, unfortunately. And on the plus side, the total spend of 55983 is a little under the budget figure of 590. You might not have noticed that one changing at the same time. Excel's also good at lists. If you keep a record of people, transactions, events, payments, places, in fact, pretty much anything you can think of. Excel makes it easy to make sense of those lists. With tools like filtering, sorting, and pivot tables, it's good at helping you turn data into information. And yes, there is a difference. This spreadsheet shows the list of invoices received. There are lots of them, but that doesn't really bother Excel. We can sort them. Here, I'm using the date column so I can see the newest one first. But I could also use the amount column to show the most expensive item at the top of the list. Filtering lets me select just the invoices from a particular company. Pivot tables, which will take a little longer to set up, allow me to view a summary of the data in the entire list. Last, but by no means least, Excel is great for producing charts and graphs. If you want to help others to understand a set of numbers, a chart is a very powerful way to communicate this sort of information. Excel can produce all sorts of charts with very little time or effort needed. In fact, sometimes it's a bit too easy to produce a chart in Excel. Here's the data from the budget example displayed as a pie chart. So we can easily see who's spending the biggest slice of petty cash. 
And the output from that list of invoices, displayed as a pivot table, gives us a clear idea where our costs are heading. Oops. So, calculations, lists, and charts. Those are the three ways in which Excel can help you. Let's sound. You can make anything that you can list, anything you have numbers with. I plan my wedding in Excel. I do my softball schedules in Excel. It looks like our volleyball, basketball, I don't know if they do or not, but they, if they don't, they should. It's doing Excel. It's amazing, okay? Excel is awesome. Now, Maria Garcia, come to the office, please. Now, Maria Garcia, come to the office. In a couple of years, whenever y'all do your graduation invitations or some of you sooner than later, you can put names. You can put addresses, you can put states, zip codes, make it duplicate all the states instead of you having to type it 50 times in Excel, and you can mail merge, okay? You can write letters and put people's names in Excel and put them in the letter, okay? There's so many things that you can do in Excel. You can also make Excel calculate. It's really great because a lot of you probably don't like math. A lot of you do, though. I was shocked. It'll make it, it can calculate for you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump into it. Some of you have already opened up Excel sheets. That is awesome. We're going to be playing in it in just a little bit. But you can look at yours as I go through. We're going to be doing a little exercise called I do, we do, and then you do. Okay, so I'm going to do some stuff on the board and show you some stuff. And then we're going to do some stuff together. And then you're going to do something. Okay? how it's going to work. Here we go. Excel is what we call software. All right? It's not just a grid, okay? It looks like a, it looks like a graph, like you can go draw on it, don't it? What, but what is software? Y'all know what software is? All right, let me give you a, a, uh, a tip. Software is what we do stuff on the computer, okay? Hardware, think about its physical items. It's a computer... The keyboard is the mouse, okay? On this machine we use, okay? That's hardware. Software? Let's two other examples of software. Word, PowerPoint, okay? Software is just stuff on the computer. Software is things that has to be installed on the computer. So Excel, Word, PowerPoint, unless you just happen to buy a computer that they are already pre installed, and that's a huge feature because uh, it's not the cheapest thing, it's not the cheapest software. But if you don't have them, it's really hard to accomplish things on your computer. So this is a software program you want to make sure when you buy a computer it has or that you do get, okay? Usually you can buy it as a package. Okay. Again on your, this is the Excel spreadsheet, okay? You'll notice there's a bunch of different sheets at the bottom. We'll look at that. All right. Usually, when you default to open one, it either has three sheets, okay? Or I have a little plus sign right here. Okay, you look at your make sure you see what yours is. You're defaulted to one sheet, some of them did three sheets. It just varies, whatever computer setting yours is on, okay? You can add three if you use a little plus sign, or you can take them away if you hit delete. This is where we start talking about how we label things. Okay. Sales, okay? All these little boxes, individual boxes. Those are called sales, okay? Think about back to biology and anatomy, whatever you guys have had. Your blood is made up of sales, okay? So think about this whole spreadsheet. It's made up of a bunch of connected sales, okay? Now, let's look at it, though, what columns are. Think about columns on a house. Which way do they run? Up and down, right? Most of our houses, unless you uh, just have a little bitty porch, have columns, right? Columns, okay? So columns. Are your up and downs, okay? They are labeled by your ABCs, or you can say letters, either one. If I ask for either one that will be on your test, make sure you say letters or ABCs, okay? That's the same answer. So ABC. If I said D column, E column, Z column, it goes to double A, triple A. XA is crazy. It goes up to infinity. So does the number. If I say rows, what do y'all think this is? What is rows? Mm -hmm. What do you say? I'm sorry. Get yep, sideways. That's numbers. Okay. So if I say, look on row six, that you go down row six. But look over. Think about sitting in pews in church or a football game or basketball. They're rows. Okay. They go left or right. All right. Data. 
data is what we put into Excel. When we type in it, we just put data. We, you skip a few spaces, put another data. Uh, another letter, another number, that's all that. Even if it doesn't make sense to you, it makes sense data. Okay, for instance, this is data. This is something we're fixing to do in just a minute. This is class favorite treats, okay? When they voted, all right? They got 15 different votes on their class. They did different votes, so they will pick different things. In a little bit, we'll pick six categories and you'll vote them, okay? We'll see which one has the most. We may do five since this is a smaller class. Alright. This is the data that they just took, that I just showed you. They put it into readable graphs. This is what I was talking about with our objectives. It's easy to pick out the big one. Which one is what color is the big one? Four. Four, right? This one, and you can come over here to your little key. Look, Toe House Cookie. That's pretty good. I play both of that one. I like cookies. Yeah? Okay, this one's pretty easy too. You can look and see which one's the tallest, right? But this one's not as easy to read as this one, right? Is it deal? It's kind of jumbly. It's spread out. This one you can easily pick it up. That's your goal, easily to see it, okay? And different graphs will do different things, okay? And this one's just all got a lot of colors and data. If this was a cleaner chart, I think this would be just as easy to read. So it all matters what you do, okay? These are different charts too. These are, uh, these are month charts. Notice they have big categories and different months, okay? This also shows you that you have templates that you can use. All right, so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to collect our data. All right, we're going to be storing Excel in just a second. But what I want you guys to do is I want you to be thinking of your favorite candy, candy bar, treats, anything like that. Bridget, let's pick your hand up. Okay. All right. And I want you to be thinking of this while you log into Edmodo Harmony. Go to your folder. Go to the Excel folder. It's this Excel worksheet. And I want you to find these two documents and go ahead and download them. But while you're doing that, think of your favorite treats. But I like you know, Jolly Ranchers. I love Milky Way. I love Three Musketeers. Okay? And we're going to vote on them in just a minute. But while you're opening those, I want you to be thinking of it. Alright? So it should say Intro to Exploration. There's a blue one. It's Word Document. Because if you notice really quickly down here, notice how a Word Document icon is blue. Okay? So Edmodo does a really good job at trying to read like that for you. The blue document, the blue icon stands for Word Document. That little green icon stands for Excel, because Excels are green, okay? So make sure you have both of those, and you're going to need to download both of those, not just have them open. Because that worksheet will be our guide in a little bit. It's going to give you the directions, and you're going to put your answers on, okay? So it's kind of like this little bit of a scavenger hunt thing that we've done before, but it's going to ask you questions, okay? So you need to have both of those downloaded. Alright, so notice they'll go, they'll go to your bottom, just like all of our other files. You'll need to open them. Good job. You'll want to do a split screen uh, when we get start working on them. You'll want to do a split screen. Yeah, that one is, we can open it here too. Right here. No, it's the two intros. Yeah, that's it. Don't forget, you'll want to click it right there, too. Awesome, awesome. Good, good. Thank you for helping your neighbors. Awesome, good deal. Okay, and there's two documents to download. If yours has the little yellow strip at the top that says Enable Editing, you can go ahead and click that button. That allows us to make changes. You don't have to save it just yet. That's good. We'll save it together a little bit. Hit cancel. Uh, but just hit open instead of save. Good, good. Alright, what we're going to do once you get all these, these three downloaded, we're going to take our data that we're going to collect. Let's do five treats. That way someone won't get voted on. Alright, give me a one treat. Snickers. Snickers, good. All right, give me another one. Milky Way. What? Milky Way. Milky Way. What else? Snickers. 
Marching. It highlights all the numbers. It says, hey, I'm going to give you a sum. And I just have to hit the enter button. It calculates. I may have hit one too many. Oh, okay. But it's all right. Don't get the concepts. Y'all see how it ended up? I didn't have to calculate. Okay? Y'all find your auto sum bus. Find where it is so you'll know in a minute. Yours might be similar to mine. Yours might be on the insert. It could be on your data tab. Find your auto sum. Run your mouse over it. But you know where it's at. Alright. Awesome. What do the labels, what are the uh, labels for the columns? What are those? What do we say? What are the labels for the columns? Letters. Letters or anything. Same thing, right? What about rows? Yeah, numbers, good. And what are these things? Sales, remember locking your blue. Okay, sales. Let me show you something else. Notice, if I click on this fifth sale, if you want to see which one it is without having to calculate numbers and letters, notice it highlighted M for me. Notice it highlighted 13 for me. So when you put those together, that makes the sale. I would say M13. Okay? If you're trying to find... If I say, hey, go to E5, it's easier if you come up here and click your E, notice it highlighted that column for me. And then I come over here, I'm on my E, and I come over here to 5, or E13, or whatever it is. Okay, instead of you trying to figure it out just by a blank screen, you'll click the letter, or even click the number. Can I get any box that hurts a spirit Olympic t-shirt? Please pick it up today during break and Miss Johnson's spring. Just sophomore spirit Olympic t shirts. Please pick up your grade today in this Johnson drink. Alright? You will hear me say often, often say brick and mortar. Okay? Look around the room. These bricks and mortar, okay? These are all made up out of blocks and mortar. You have your easy enough, you have your block, then notice in between it's your mortar. You have your block, you have your mortar. You have your block, and you have your mortar, right? Y'all get it? Well, these. A, B, C, D are going to be our blocks, okay? Notice the little lines in between them. Look at yours if you need to. That is the border, okay? I may say in between the one and two blocks. 
click the border. That's this little big line in between them. When we click it, we're able to adjust how big, how tall, whatever it is that we click on. Okay? If you highlight several, you can actually change several, several at one time. Okay? So let me show you that real quick. And it's almost break time. So when we come back, we are going to play with it. But notice, look, how big I can make my aim call. Do you see that? Now, if I had some data in there, and I didn't need it that big, I could double-click the border between A and B. See how my mouse comes to a uh, little cross sign? If I double-click real fast, it will auto-format. Okay? Now, see that? There's also called a select all triangle. It is up here in the corner between A and 1. Y'all find that. A and 1. Click it. See what it does. Click it. It highlights your whole page. Now y'all see that? Highlights your whole page. It allows you to quickly make adjustments or delete things. So say I want to delete all this that I put in here. I just hit my delete button. It clears it out. Say I really wanted to change the whole sheet and make it look like a big graph paper. I can make my A's wider. Notice it changed every level wider. So now I really need to make it look like a square. So I can pull the mortar down between the one and two. And I'm getting closer to like a big graph sheet. Y'all see that? Now I have graphs. Now I'm getting closer to looking like a calendar. Let's see if I can make a calendar out of this. Y'all see that? It's me. Alright. Alright, but a new can be one of your best friends. What I want you to do now is I want you to start on A2. Everybody click on A2 for me. And I'll tell you why we skip number one in just a second. Click on A2 for me. And start typing Snickers. Alright, just type that one word, Snickers. Alright, then A2, type Snickers. All right. Now, while you're still in Snicker Sale, hit the Enter button. Notice it jumps to A3. Now you're able to type Milky Way. When you hit Enter, 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 it'll jump down, 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 down. Okay? Now, whenever you need to hit Enter, okay? We go ahead and hit Enter for me. Type Milky Way. Hit Enter. Type Payday. Dinner, payday, dinner, receipts, dinner, sorry, pet, dinner. All right, while you're down there, at any point, hit the tab button. Notice it goes to your right. Your tab button throws it out to the right. So if I was typing Snickers, I could have hit the tab button and typed my 10. And I could have hit enter and done no kilo. Have it one. And up your numbers two. You can go ahead and click on B2. Then you can hit 10, hit enter. You can hit one, enter. Two, enter. You may have to, some of you on the new computer, may if you hit enter, it may bring you back to the front. Then you have to hit tab over. Okay? Just depends on how your computer is set up and what version you have. Alright, this is where we're going to stop before the break bell rings because we're going to do some calculations, we're going to do some totals, and we're going to do a title before we jump into our work. 